welcome everybody to the aid station. I'm absolutely delighted this afternoon to be traveling all the way to Switzerland to be talking to Clara Miret, who is the fundraising manager for Give and Gain, an amazing young lady who I had the pleasure of meeting uh, at the European Business of Running in Prague last year and also came and joined us in Singapore at Mass Participation World. Welcome, Clara. Great to see you. Thank you very much, Chris. I'm really happy to be here and I'm really happy that you've invited me to come on your show. Um, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, just, uh, just wonderful to have this opportunity to speak with you. And, you know, I, I shared when I met you and one of the things that, that struck me about you straight away is you have this amazing positive attitude and you always seem to have a smile on your face and I'm interested to hear in these challenging times of you know uh, how, how, how you you know your positive attitude I'm sure there's been some times on the roller coaster and maybe just start by just giving you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself a bit of your background and, 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 and what brings Clara to where you are now. Amazing thank you very much so my name is Clara and I am Spanish I'm from Barcelona I am 22 years old and I did my studies in international relations in the UK, where I graduated from two years ago. And then after that, I moved to Switzerland to a small alpine village in the mountains. And since then, I've been working at the Give and Gain Foundation, which is a foundation whose mission is to promote global philanthropy. And we are a global fundraising platform for charities and we also partner with mass participation events to help charities raise money and to help events have a bigger impact in the society in terms of charity. It's a wonderful organization and you know, great to have met some of your, your team um, over the last couple of years as well. I'd love to hear, I mean, Switzerland sounds absolutely beautiful. It's one of my, my favorite countries. I was very lucky to go there when I was a, a young boy at the age of, uh, of 16. I, I spent some time there um, from Zimbabwe and it's absolutely beautiful country. Um, but it's been one of the countries that's been quite severely impacted by COVID-19. And I'd love to just get you to share a little bit, if you would, about, you know, what's daily life like for you? Um, you're still in that little village or whereabouts is it that you are now? And, and what happens day to day and how does that impact you personally and, and from a work perspective, please? So, yes, I'm still in Switzerland. Before the lockdown started, I had to sort of decide whether to stay in Switzerland or go back to Spain with my family. And I decided to stay here. And... Yes, we are in lockdown, but we still have the freedom to go for a bit of exercise during the day or um, just it's, it's a bit more relaxed in that sense than in Spain, whereas them, my family, they've been in lockdown for like three weeks and they still have another uh, two weeks to go and then we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, in that sense, still in the village and, and sort of dealing with COVID-19, like, like everyone just staying inside. Daily life is uh, just getting up, making a pot of coffee, getting on with the day, then trying to do some yoga at home, dinner with the flatmates, and there you go, another, another day. And then something that, that has surprised me about COVID-19 is well, not the, sorry, not about COVID-19, but about how we're dealing with the situation, is that before, before, before the outbreak, we never really worked at home. And that was something that I was really curious about. And surprisingly, it's gone quite well. I really enjoy working from home because I think I'm very bad at sitting in a chair for eight hours. <laughs> and I really like the freedom of just... Um, being able to work from the sofa, then from the balcony, then from the dining table. And, and in that sense, that's really nice. On the other hand though, um, what, what surprised me, but on, on a negative side or, or however you want to call it, is that I thought that I would be much better at dealing with the like work-life balance. I thought that I'd be able to clock off at like 5.30 and say, okay, work's over. Um, but that's not been the case at all. I just feel like now I live with work and, and that it's way harder to put boundaries and, and to sort of like clock off your mind. But I think that's something that most people 
that uh, now can relate to um, um, that's something that we're all experiencing that it's just way harder to just stop and 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 have some peace of mind and not not peace of mind but you know just get out of work yeah. segregate the two of them yeah kind of shut yeah. the one door and, and, and open the other yeah and, and look i can totally relate i've spent a lot of my life working from home particularly when i first started my business and, and i work from home now and uh, yeah I can, I can totally imagine i mean i'd love to hear a little bit if i may you know obviously again we spoke about switzerland your family in spain do you directly know people that have have, have had COVID 19 at this stage uh yeah so um in spain actually no which spain has um really high well it's it's the second country after the us with more cases yeah. um i don't know my family are all safe but here in switzerland i was speaking the other day with my next door neighbor and he was like well i was i had corona um for two weeks and and he had been um he had had the illness and we shared the same lift and and we share everything and i hadn't known anything yeah. and that felt a bit weird because I could have just helped with the with the shopping and all of that, but but you know it was next to me and I just had no idea. Isn't that wonderful? That that that's what I so love about you. So your your first thing was I could have helped with the shopping. Many people's reaction would have been I was so angry he didn't tell me I could have got the disease in the lift with him. And and that's one of the things I just find that is so beautiful about you. You've got that just that incredible giving approach, and and I think. You know, and, and I've said it in many different platforms that this is a wonderful opportunity for more of this humanity to come out. And, and I really applaud you from that. Uh, well, I mean, you know, go, going on from there, um, what, you've shared a little bit of, you know, the challenge of separating work and, 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 and social life and, and so on. I mean, is there, a, is there a big challenge that you really face? Like, you know, from a work perspective, was it a big challenge to say, you know, that whole decision of, do I stay in Spain? Do I stay in Switzerland, or do I go back to my family in Spain? You know, what what are some of the challenges that you've you've dealt with and are continuing to deal with? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, in a personal level, uh, yeah, that decision was hard to take. But then once I said that I would stick with Switzerland, that was it, and you know, you just have to stick with it. But then, from a work perspective, it's been hard because we we help charities raise money and usually these charities rely on events like marathons like the milano marathon or the v marathon or limassol marathon and they've all been either postponed or cancelled so the question is how do we keep helping these charities in raise funds where their main source of income has been either postponed or cancelled so we've just had to sort of um reinvent a little bit um what what not really reinvent but just try to come with new approaches try to help charities to engage their supporters from home and and just keeping supporting them knowing that they can't rely on these events in fact i think that the uk government yesterday announced that they're gonna have a 750 million fund for charities because really they're they're going to be struggling a lot yeah. and then on the other hand, we also support events in having this impact in the community. And the question now is, how do we help them to still have that impact? And we have a really good relationship with them and we've been communicating with them and, and creating copy if they want it. So some sort of like communications for their participants to let them know that they can still raise funds even though the event has been postponed or canceled. So that in that sense, the event still has that function um, or like it, it can still be used for charities and it can still be, it can still promote um, community work and, 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 and support these charities. Yeah, and I th I look, I think it's a really great point, isn't it? And, you know, so many events have this community that they work with and, and, and you know, the opportunity to use charity as a way to engage with them now is wonderful and, uh, you know, Typically, in, in times like this, people tend to pull back, but there's, there's even more of a need for giving at this stage. Have you got any sense of, you know, from a percentage perspective, how far down fundraising is compared to what it would be like for a similar period? I mean, we're now, you know, just gone into Q2 in any sense of what the impact has been? So, um, in terms of statistics, not really, but uh, we've created this page where we have 
all the charities that have been somehow affected by the disruptions of COVID-19 and with charities that are tackling COVID-19 and uh, for example charities that provide soap and clean water and what we've actually seen is that there's a lot of fundraisers just starting their projects that are at home and they're just they're just creating these fun and creative uh, projects We've seen people painting, um, knitting scarves, uh, cooking challenges, and it's wonderful to see that in times of, ha of hardship, there's so much generosity out there. And that, yeah, everyone is struggling. Many people have lost their jobs, but you know, there, there's still wonderful people out there who, who, want to give, who want to give back and give to charity. That's wonderful. And, and I guess that leads on to the, the next question that I wanted to ask you around innovation. So, uh, you know, I guess you've looked at innovating. You talk about some innovative ideas of raising funds. I mean, are there any particular innovations within the mass participation industry or just generally that you've saw, seen that you, you've thought, wow, that's a really amazing innovation that's exciting? So, yes, yeah, something... So something that we've experienced at Given Gain or that someone that we're partnering with is this race called Courir pour elle, which in English means running for women. And it's, uh, it's celebrated, it happens in France, 20,000 women, women only, and it's against female cancer. And it will happen on the 17th May. And their, their decision was, do we cancel it? Do we postpone it? Like many of other events in the industry that are going through the same things and they decided that their event is um is, is just they just don't want to cancel the event and that they're gonna move it to another format and it's going to be virtual and they're going to encourage people uh well women to to just do this um like fitness exercises at home and they're going to have the speeches from the president and from the people who were meant to talk in the, in the event day. And they're going to raise funds for uh, female, scan female cancer. And I think that just seeing uh, a race that, that's, that touches the lives of so many women and that then also raises funds against female cancer and that is saying, well, yeah, it's, it's hard, but let's just reinvent ourselves and come up with something different and let's let's go for it and let's and let's and let's make it happen i think that's been really inspiring also to see from our side because unfortunately many events have had to cancel and, and postpone which is absolutely normal but it's also great to see some that you know try to come up with with something very different but that still really works yeah wonderful and and that kind of leads me you mentioned inspiring i mean what what inspires you at the moment i mean as i said at the beginning i in the little I know of you, you're such a, a positive person. I'm sure you've had some some challenging times. What what is it that kind of gets you up in the morning and gets you inspired on on days when you're not feeling so great? Okay, um, so let's see. I don't really want to go rambling, but I'd say that uh, what is really inspiring me and one of my main takings from from this situation is that we are finding comfort in this comfort to foster social responsibility as in you know before COVID-19 we would have thought um, that staying three days at home in a row without leaving home that would have been a pain for many of us it would have made us a bit anxious not being able to go outside and run or have a beer with your friend and now it's just what we're meant to do and we need to do it and we need to be okay with it and we're doing it for a good reason to 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 be socially responsible to make sure that no one gets the virus and i just think that that's really inspiring that you know this is a situation which would have made us uncomfortable but now we just need to feel comfortable with it and we need to find joy in it and we need to be okay with it and we know that it's for the greater good and i think that's great and i just think that there's a lot of value in challenging a situation that previously would have made us uncomfortable and now just be okay and and be happy with it i think that would be my my main taking well, that's wonderful being comfortable with being uncomfortable uh what, what a great way to finish be comfortable with being uncomfortable that is so awesome thank you so much clara merit uh amazing work that you and the giving gain team do send my 
very best to your wonderful team, Mark and, uh, and Maris and them. And thank you so much for making the time. It's been wonderful chatting as always. Amazing. Thank you, thank Chris, you. for having me. Thanks Ciao. a lot. Bye. Ciao.